Hi, this is Jared with Metal Speak, and today I am reviewing the latest release from uh, Scottish folk metal band uh, Skinnock on Tursa. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, the album is called The Giants of Auld. It was released on March 22nd uh, through Candlelight Records. On the brutality scale, I gave this album an 8 out of 10. Uh, folk metal is kind of a tough uh, bitch to get right, in my opinion, um, and I'm almost immediately skeptical of bands that build themselves as folk metal. Uh, you know, there are a few folk metal acts that I legitimately enjoy, like uh, Alluviate or uh, Phaloc, uh, but on the whole, I, I relatively remain unimpressed with folk metal. I, I just, I, I can't get into it. Uh, it seems like with a lot of these acts, you know, the folk instruments are way overdone and somehow detract, and maybe even emasculate uh, certain songs that would otherwise totally kick ass. Um, and sometimes it's just the subject matter. I mean, how many times can you possibly write about getting wasted or uh, getting wasted in medieval times, you know what I mean? Um, but at any rate, uh, suffice it to say, I was I was leery of this group uh, when I when we first uh, came across them. But I'm actually extremely glad that I gave them a shot because uh, the Giants of Alt is an amazing album from, from start to finish. Uh, from the first notes of the line of Scotland to the last notes of Coolid and more. Uh, there's an energy to this album, you know, maybe even an exuberance, um, if you will, uh, to the black and folk metal attack of this album that um, it's equal parts invigorating and infectious. Uh, in fact, I believe my first two words uh, about two minutes into the album were, holy shit. Um, on the songwriting side, I gave this one a 10 out of 10. Uh, the Giants of Auld is particularly exceptional in the songwriting department. Uh, the band's influences are pretty obvious once you get into it. Uh, you have the driving, galloping rhythm, rhythmic sensibilities of Immortal. Uh, you've got the haunting, keyboard layering of Emperor. And uh, you've got the progressive leanings of Enslaved. Uh, the album is replete with memorable riffs and catchy choruses, especially on songs like The Lion of Scotland, uh, Bannockburn, and Hail the Land of My Fathers. Uh, those three songs in particular will, will latch onto your psyche for days if you let them. Uh, this isn't to say that every song on the album is just balls to the wall. You have your slower songs um, on the album, uh, like the album's intro, The Piper O Dundee, uh, which is kind of an acoustic guitar and uh, flute-laden song that eventually segues into a bombastic, bombastic cacophony of electric guitars and keyboards uh, before launching full bore into uh, The Lion of Scotland. Uh, kind of reminding me of a shorter version um, of uh, Als Varter and uh, Ye and Transiparium from Emperor's uh, Anthems to the Woken at Dusk, if you've heard that. Uh, the, uh, the similarities are pretty striking there. Um, but then you have songs like The Spellbound Night and uh, Colet and More uh, that are more mid-tempo but still have teeth like the rest of the songs. Um, and then the album's closer, uh, which I'm definitely going to mess up the pronunciation here, is uh, Blar Na Eglaise Bryce. <laughs> um, which is positively just just a haunting and gorgeous flute piece that, that really wraps the album up very nicely. Um, all told, this album is a great front-to-back listen, but you know each song on the album can stand alone easily on its own merits. So very, very well done. Um, on production, I gave this one a 10 out of 10. The, the production on this album is phenomenal. Um, again, the guitars have that stout, immortal-esque tone to them. Um, I, actually, there were times where I started wondering if they hadn't sampled the tone from At the Heart of Winter or even uh, Damned in Black. Uh, the low end on the rhythm section is just gut-rumblingly satisfying. Uh, the folk instruments are, are there. You can hear them, but they're not overwhelming. And, you know, everything's just very, very well balanced in the mix, so fantastic production on this one. So for repeat listenability, I give this one a 9 out of 10. Uh, this album is one that I just keep going back to again and again. I, I love the energy of it, the guitar work, the, the folk influence is not overplayed, but it's definitely, it, it's, it's tastefully done um, in a way that, that's appealing to me, um, especially because I'm not a fan of folk metal as a, as a general rule. Uh, you know, just the positively infectious uh, rhythms and guitar work. Um, there are times that I've been listening to this at work on my iPod and I somehow invariably find myself like drumming my desk to the songs with my pen or even doing air guitar on some of the, some of the sicker uh, solos and riffs on the album. So um, people stare uh, when that happens, but you know what? Fuck them. Uh, good tunes is good tunes and there's plenty to be had here. So blow me. Uh, so yeah, uh, artwork, eight out of, yeah, I gave this one an 8 out of 10. Um, I only have a digital copy of the album, so I can only comment on the front cover. 
the cover has these kind of uh, stone obelisks that kind of sit on this kind of frostbitten landscape again. Uh, heavy immortal uh, reference there. Um, these these rocks that are sitting there are kind of equal parts uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey and uh, the closing scene of Brave if you've seen that movie so not uh, not bad eye candy at all so I give this album overall a 9 out of 10 uh, The Giants of Vault is a spectacular album uh, you know with as watered down as metal tends to get it's refreshing to have a band come along and actually inject new life into things without going too far around the bend from what most metal heads like me would consider enjoyable and uh, really looking forward to uh, hearing what these guys uh, come up with in the future. So thanks for listening.